friends welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new my name is Antonisha and on this channel I talk about planning reading and budgeting my way through my best life so if that is something that you are interested in be sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any videos that I post um, as you can see from the thumbnail and the title for today's video I wanted to do a walkthrough of my new budget planner um, it's not quite new but it is new um, I want to do a bit of an introduction series so I've been telling you guys that I'm going to be adding budgeting content to this channel um, that is planning to I'm planning on that being my Friday and Saturday video so I'm taking on a lot trying to do four videos a week but I'm gonna see if I can keep up with it but before I just started jumping into budgeting videos I kind of wanted to walk you guys through um, mine and my husband and just our family's budget and what we use and how we budget because budgeting is such a personal um, experience and everyone does it different. Everyone's finances look different. So I wanted to take some time to introduce you guys to our budget before I just start doing budgeting videos. Um, so I'm going to do a series, if you will. So the video for today, sorry, um, the video for today is walking you guys through um, my budgeting planner. So I budget in two different ways. I have my pen and paper method and then I have the digital side of things. Um, and so I wanted to break that down. So today's video is going to be um, a walkthrough and unboxing of my budget planner, which is the budget by paycheck workbook by the budget mom. So I've talked about the budget mom's budget by paycheck workbook um, here and there on the channel. I've been using printables from printables that are in this workbook, you can basically buy the physical book in two different formats and then you can buy the printable, the actual planner as a printable and just print the whole thing out or print what you need. I'll link her website below. Um, or you can buy a lot of the worksheets that are in here because it's a workbook. You can buy the worksheets individually and basically use what you need. Plus she has an amazing um, free resource library on her website where there's a lot of printables in there as well. So I've been using that in my big disbound and I've loved it, but as I've gotten more and more into the system and realized how well it works for us, I just decided to go ahead and invest in the workbook, especially since I switched to my Amplify Planner because I didn't want to, like I said, keep tipping in um, the weekly budgeting sheet and then having to figure out what to do about my expense tracker. And it's just good to have everything in one place. I don't have to go back. Um, I don't know what it is, but y'all, I'm getting into bound planners. You know, bound, any coil bound, spiral bound has never been my thing. But I think that's my thing now is just having everything together. So that's what I decided to do. Um, so what my plan is, like I said, the video for today is going to be part one of my pen and paper budgeting. So we are just going to do a walkthrough of this. Um, I put some sticky notes in here and tried out some pages, um, in January since I won't be starting this until now and going into April. So I'll give you a walkthrough of the entire planner so you can see what it looks like. And then in my video tomorrow, um, I will actually be setting up the beginning pages which you will see is a lot of yearly um tracking and high level overview stuff and then next week um i'll do another two-part series on the digital side of um our budgeting so that is my google calendar that i keep all of our bills on um <clears throat> I have um, you, in Google Calendar, you can have like multiple calendars and see them overlaid on top of each other. So I have one specifically for finance so I can like turn off all of our appointments and show you just um, my finance section of my Google Calendar where I have all of my bills. And then also I want to show you guys into my bank that I use. I have PNC and we have a virtual wallet, which is a combination of accounts. I'll talk about it in that video, but I'm going to screen share and show you into um, our online banking so you can see how I manage because we do use the cash envelope method, but we're cashless um, using PNC's virtual wallet. So I wanna go over that in our budget categories. And then part two of the digital side of things is showing you how we manage our digital cash envelopes and our digital sinking funds. Um, and so that's gonna kind of lead into me doing two videos a week on budgeting. So on Friday, my video is going to be my actual budget with me. We get paid every Friday. Um, so I will be doing this kind of last minute because I'll be filming it on Thursday to go up for you guys on Friday. And then on Saturday, I will show you um, stuffing our digital cash envelopes in our sinking funds. 
So that is the plan. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around so we can go ahead and do a walkthrough of this Budget by Paycheck workbook. Okay, guys. So this is the Budget by Paycheck workbook by The Budget Mom. This color, um, this cover color is called Paint Strokes. She had two different ones for this year. Um, she had another one called Peony. Um, I will overlay a photo here so you can see what it looks like. I think that one is sold out. Um, or it just wasn't in stock when I ordered. I wasn't interested in that one anyway. I like the paint strokes. Um, I love the colors. Uh, I didn't even plan this. These are my two, um, my Amplify pocket notebook and my pocket calendar. This is where I keep them because I can reach them when I'm working at my desk. Um, but you, you guys see this, this is my colors. Um, so this is the large um, budget by paycheck workbook. It is a, it's a big chunky thing. Um, it is eight and a half by 11. So full um, letter size, well, US letter size. Um, and then she does have another option that is smaller, but they're individual booklets. It's a box set and you get like um, 13 booklets total. So you get one for all of the yearly stuff in the overview, which you guys will see in just a second. And then you get one booklet per month. Um, that is more convenient for some people who want to have a more portable option. But like I said, I like having everything in one place. This budget planner will not leave my house. It won't leave my desk. So I don't mind that it's a large size. And you guys know I don't mind using bigger planners, especially when I know they're not going anywhere. So um, let's go ahead and walk through this. So the first thing it has is this super thick, I mean, super thick cover um, is really good quality. I am not one to know specs and stuff like that with coils and spirals and stuff because that's just never been my type of planner. But as you can see, it has got a pretty chunky coil on it which is good because I do have um some sticker kits coming for this there are a couple sticker shops that make sticker kits so when I do um my setup and I'm using a sticker kit I'll mention them at that point but I do have some coming so there is room to grow um on this coil which is really good um so when you first open it up let me get these out of the way when you first open it up, you just have the back cover. Like I said, these are my colors. Purple and teal are my two favorite colors. Yellow is my happy color. I just love this color scheme. So you do have a little note from um, Kumiko, the budget mom. Her name is Kumiko, but she just goes by Miko. Um, so you have a little note from her um, and all of her socials. And then you have this cover page that says this workbook belongs to and it found kindly contact. Again, this is not leaving the house. So what I'm just going to do is just put our family's name and then the year, um, which would be 2022, because these planners are undated. So even though the months are tabbed, they are completely undated. So you can just jump in at any time. So I don't mind that I'm not using January, February, and March. Initially, I was going to just start this in April and then loop it around into 2023. But I already know that by the time the new planners come out, I'm going to want to get a new one. And I want to be able to just have one year bound together. So I'm just going to not use January and February and I'll use the last few weeks of March in here so I don't have to print out a page but it is completely undated even though the tabs are already labeled so the next thing you get to is um, instructions I absolutely love this about the budget mom is she is very very detailed and giving you like instructions and formulas and stuff on how to use it so these are how to use like she's telling you how to use every single worksheet that's in this workbook obviously you can use it the way that works best for you but this is her suggested way um so i did get this in yesterday and it was kind of slow at work so in between calls um, i read through all of this and i was highlighting some things this was very helpful for me to buy this um this workbook as well because like I said I had been using some of her worksheets and kind of piecing it together a little bit and then I kept having questions about certain things that I wanted to do or how do you do this or that and I couldn't find clear-cut answers I did start searching on her website and I found some answers in some of her blog posts also she has an amazing Facebook community which I will link below as well and I got in there last night for the first time and so many questions were answered um, especially like there's a whole lot of posts about people going cashless and because we use cashless cash envelopes um it was very helpful to see that so a lot of my questions got answered just li looking in these instructions and everything and then going into the facebook group so you have um four pages of instructions and like i said she tells you how to use every single um every single page in this workbook I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more but not this is a big book so i can't zoom in too much without cutting stuff off 
So that's where you get, so you get your instructions and then you go straight into the yearly section. So you have this financial plan goal worksheet. And like I said, every single worksheet, she tells you exactly what it is and what to do with it. So this is where you put your short term. So within one year, medium term goals within five years and long term goals within 10 to 15 years. I will be filling this out. Um, Alan and I already have these goals figured out. Um, maybe not necessarily in the time frame, but like my short term goals for one year, I figured this out when I did the financial portion of my Moxie Life goal setting for the year. And so I'm just going to put some stuff in here. Um, so we kind of have an idea of what we're trying to do, but like I said, we can have already figured this out. So you guys will see that in tomorrow's video when I'm setting up this planner. Um, the next page is membership and subscription reminder worksheet. Um, this, the way that it's meant is for you to put the due date, a description. So if you have like Amazon prime or, um, any other subscription that you pay on an annual basis, so you can put what the annual cost is, and then you can put what the monthly cost is. We don't pay annually for anything. It's just easier for, unless there's like a huge savings, like even with Prime, it's just easier for us to just pay it every month and just factor it into our bills than to pay it at one lump sum and try to either cash flow it or set aside the money. So, but I'm just going to use this just to list it out so we know what all of our subscriptions are. Because when we first started budgeting at the beginning of this year, we did a major overhaul. We went through our bank statements. We saw all these different subscriptions we didn't even use and we canceled a lot of them. And we kept only the ones we actually use. So it'd be very helpful to see them all laid out. Um, and this will be easy for me to do again, because I have all of my bills in my Google calendar, but you could do this. Um, like I said, if you do pay it annually, you can put the annual cost and what the monthly cost would be. If you want to set aside like a sinking fund or something, you could do that, but I'm just going to use it just to list out our subscription. So we know what they are. Um, and then this page is the yearly savings goals and events, um, and then tracker. So this is for your sinking funds. Um, so these are the things that you're saving for. So some examples of our sinking funds, we have like Christmas, back to school. Um, we have kids activities. Um, we have various sinking funds. We have like our new car, our new house, all of that. So you can put like your goals you can put what your yearly goal is that you want to save and then break it down into how much you need to save every month to get to that yearly goal and if there's a due date for it. I probably will not be using this. For one, we have more than eight um, sinking funds. Um, but also, we only have a handful of sinking funds that are date specific, like back to school and Christmas um, have dates on. I think those only two. I will show you guys when I do the digital portion and show you our sinking funds, but most of our sinking funds are just ongoing sinking funds. So I don't necessarily need to use this. Um, this page I do like, so this page goes with this one. So for each of those sinking funds, you basically can track um, your balance in those sinking funds. So you would put how much you started, um, how much you have in that sinking fund, that envelope, that account, wherever you keep that sinking fund, where you began for the month, how much you added to the sinking fund, how much you took out and what your ending balance is. And you can track that every single month for all eight goals. I love this, but I like to see this on a, um, on a weekly basis and not a monthly basis, just because of the way we handle our finances. So I'll show you how I basically recreated this on a different spread in a little bit. Um, and then this is a visual for the same sinking fund. So you have eight of these and then you can use this and basically color it in to um, show as those sinking funds are growing. Again, I won't be using these either. So what I will probably do is just use some um, like my tape runner. Like I have the, the Tombow um, mono tape runners and I'll probably just tape these two pages together and tape these two pages together because I won't use them. Um, so the next one, and see, like I said, I've put some post-it notes in here to give me an idea of what I'm going to do with these pages. So this is your yearly spending overview. So on this page, you can put your total monthly inflow. So this is a two-page spread. So from January to May and then June through December with your total. So your earned income, your other income, and your savings use is your total monthly inflow. And then you put all your expense categories and how much you spent um, in all of those categories so you can track it throughout the year. I think this is very, very helpful and I will definitely be using this. Um, I wanna, we get to the monthly section, I'll show you the worksheets that you would calculate all of this and you could just transfer it here. Um, and I just put on here that this has 30 lines um, and I have 19 total expense categories on my list. Um, like I said, I'll talk about it when I set it up, but I was just kind of, like I said, going through this while I was at work last night and it was slow. 
um, and just figuring out like what I'm going to put where and where things are going to fit. Um, and then this next spread is your yearly balance overview. I really like this spread, but I don't think I'm going to be using it this year. I think I'm just going to wait until next year. So in this, you put your savings balance, your debt balance, your retirement balance, and that, um, and then you figure out your total net worth. And then you use these um, to track basically two different things. So this is the yearly balance overview at the top. So some people use this to track like one savings and one debt. I know I've seen some people track like their retirement account and maybe their debt that they're paying off or something like that. I don't know. I might use this this year because the only, Alan and I don't have any consumer debt. We just, except for our car. Um, so we have our car payment and then we have student loans his student loans are in the current uh, COVID forbearance thing that's going on. My student loans, I don't have to pay on them until March of next year of 2023 because I have an income-based deferment based on my 2021 taxes, which I wasn't working at the time. So I have zero for my payment um, and my interest is not accruing either. So I'm not focusing on my student loans at all in 2022. And then Alan's, he has like less than 15,000 in student loans. So once this COVID forbearance is up and once we see what's going on with that, we may start looking at that. But my student balances, my student loans are the big ones. I have about $71,000 in student loans. But again, we're not tackling that until next year. Our goal for this year is to just build our emergency fund and build our savings and then just maintain our bills. Um, but I may track our car payment because we are thinking about just trying to make little small extra payments to bring down that balance. So we'll see about that. But at this point, I don't think I'm going to use this this year. I do have a 401k at work um, that is being contributed to from every one of my paychecks and my employer matches it. So I may use this this year. I'm not sure, but I will definitely be using this for next year. And then the next press, so you have your bill tracker. Um, and then again, I just put um, how many lines it had on here so I could know that all my bills would fit because like I said we have a lot of subscriptions so you would just put the due date what the expense or bill is the amount that to do what the payment method is um, so like I would put if it's auto drafted or if I need to pay it myself or here you go it says auto draft and then January through December and it's basically for you to just check off that the bill did get paid so I will definitely be using this and then this page is a medical bill payment tracker. So if you have medical bills and you're making payments towards it, you can use this to track it. I don't have any medical bills. Um, actually, I lied. I do have like a $500 bill that I'm just going to pay off in one go. But I don't have any big medical bills as of right now. I was thinking I might use this to track what we're just spending on health and medical type things, but I have that um, as one of my expense categories, so I could just track it here. So I may just not use this page at all. And then you get a two page um, spread of just notes, lots of notes. And in here, I'm just gonna add, I've got a bunch of notes in the back of my planner in my brain dump notebook, um, just about things that we figured out, like the amounts that we're adding to our sinking funds and our cash envelopes every week and bi-weekly. So I'm just gonna put that here so that I can reference that every month um, or every week rather when we set up our budget. And then you get into the actual monthly sections. So I'm gonna skip over January for a second. Um, I'm just gonna go to February to show you because all the months look exactly the same and I've been testing stuff out in January. But we'll come back to that in a second. So um, as we're flipping through, I will show you what the dividers look like. So for January, it says, Dear Future, I'm ready. I just, I love this color scheme. And February, it says, Finding happiness with what you have today will save you from always wanting more in the future. Um, this is March. Struggle and the ability to overcome is empowering. Be proud of what you've accomplished. April says the sacrifices you are making right now are for something better. You are fighting for something better. Um, May, I love this color scheme. Uh, never allow someone to tell you that you can't do it. Use their negativity as fuel to prove them wrong. June says the hardest part is starting, but once you do, you're excited to continue. So very true because it's this. it's been a a process for Alan and I to get on the same page and get down to our budgeting. And now that we've started it, we've just, we're really excited. We're excited to see our savings balances grow, to see, you know, it's just, it is, that's, that's very, very true. Um, July says, if you want to learn how to manage your money, first you have to align your spending with your priorities. August says, a realistic budget isn't about what you want to spend, but what you're actually spending. So very true. <laughs> so very true. Um, September, you can't do it all today, but you can do it. I love how motivating, I love 
the the aesthetic of this planner but i love the motivating quotes every month it just really pushes you to keep moving um october says every day is the new opportunity to do better than you did the day before november says once you stop comparing yourself to others that's when you find true contentment beyond true in every every aspect of life that is so true and then december says you have the freedom and power to create the life you desire um, and then at the back, you get a pocket folder and then you get two sheets of some cute little budget stickers. But I just wanted to flip through those really quick. And now I will actually go to um, February to show you what it looks like in the month. So the first thing you get is your budget calendar. Um, like I said, it's even though it has the month on it, it is completely undated. There are no days of the week. There's no dates. Um, so you can do a Sunday start, a Monday start. You can do a Wednesday start if you want to. Um, she did mention, though, there was a printing issue. And she will make, sh you make sure you check off and acknowledge it before you order it. They did accidentally print Thursday, Friday, Saturday in December only. But it's fine because, like I said, I'm probably going to be using sticker kits every single month to cover these up. If not, I can just white them out because I am doing a Monday start. Um, that is just my preference. But so you get a your budget calendar. I love how large this is. And basically, I'm going to take this and write out my paydays and transfer my bills from my Google Calendar to this. And then I can color code them to line up with the payday so I know what bills are getting paid with each paycheck. Um, and then you have this sidebar that has goals this month. Um, and we will probably set a few financial goals and also use this to track. Um, I'll also put in here, not just my bills, but any appointments or events or activities that are happening that is gonna cause us to spend money. So if we have a doctor's appointment and I know we have to uh, pay a copay, whether I'm gonna use my health savings account debit card or I'm gonna use money out of our account, um, just stuff like that. If we're going to a birthday party, if it's a holiday, something like that, any event or activity or appointment that's going to probably require us to spend money, I want to have that in here so we're mindful of it and we're budgeting for it. And then you go to the budget paycheck tracker. So this is kind of the bread and butter of this system. Um, and you get five of these, I believe. One, two, three, four five yep you get five of these just in case there are five weeks in the month which works out perfectly for us because again um alan gets paid every week we get paid i get paid bi-weekly but we budget weekly so having one of these for every week is awesome um and basically the way that this is broken down so at the top you have your income um so you have four lines for income and everything is you have a column for your budgeted amount and the column for your actual amount so you have your income up here. Here you have your book, your bill section. And this is what I was talking about with um, having more space and having this all spread out versus the one that I was using in the Amplify um, that printout. They had like all of this in one column. So your expense tracker would be on the same page, which is fine for most people, but I like this spread. So you have your spot for your bills, your envelopes, your sinking funds, any extra debt, extra savings, and then you can total it out at the bottom. And then this page is the one that I recreated, but I will show you this is how it comes. So this is for those of you who are using cash envelopes um, and for you to break it down so you can put your categories, whether it's your envelopes or your sinking funds or both, and the total amount that you need for each of those categories. And then you can break down your cash denomination. So ones, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds. Um, so you know how many of each bill you need. And then at the back of um, every month, she has these um, these cash envelope teller slips. So basically you can take that information and put it on here. So you can take these and you can just cut these out and take it to the bank so the teller knows exactly how many of each denomination to give you. Um, she also sells these in a little sticky notepad as well. Um, but that's what this is for. Again, because we don't use actual cash envelopes. We use digital cash envelopes. I don't need this. So I'll show you guys in a little bit what I did with this page. Um, and then you have this spot that says money thoughts and then priority goal. And I really like that. I was actually going to cover, like get a, another printout of something else and cover this whole page. But I do want to use these money thoughts and these priority goals. So again, I will show you in a second what I did to this page. So you have five of these. And then you get to your expense tracker. Um, so you can do this however you want. I've seen it um, in her Facebook group in various places. People do their expense tracking in a lot of different ways. But up here you have a spot to write the account. So if you're tracking 
um, like your cash envelopes versus your checking account versus your credit card. You can put whatever account you're using. You can use your starting balance. I know some people like to do a running balance, like a check register. Some people just track their expenses and don't do the running balance, but it's there if you want to. So you can put the date, the transaction, your budget category, whether it was a withdrawal or deposit and the amount, and then your ending balance. And then you have six of these um, per month. And then when you get towards the end, so you have your debt payment plan. So again, all of these worksheets, there are instructions at the front on how to use them, what to do with it. But basically this is for you to make a plan of paying off your debt. So you would list out all of your creditors, the balance, the interest rate, the minimum payment, and then the order that you wanna actually tackle paying them off. Um, so you could probably set this up at the beginning of the month. Um, and then prioritize which ones you're paying off. Um, here you can list any extra debt payments that you're making, and then you can see your monthly debt progress and your overall debt progress. I may possibly use this, but again, the only debt that we have right now that we're paying on is our car payment. Um, so it would just be that, but I do wanna use this so I can keep track of the balance um, and any extra amounts that we pay towards our car payment. So I may use this, Every month, I may not, um, because like I said, our car payment is the only one and it, it be counted as a bill, even though it is debt. Um, and then this page here is your monthly net worth tracker. I know we will not be using this this year. Um, we may get into using it next year, but it's basically, you're listing out all of your assets and the balances, all your liabilities and the balances, and then using it to total your net worth. I love, like I said, even though she has all of these instructions up front um in like the formulas for figuring out these she also has the formulas on the page so you can figure out how do you calculate these different numbers and then you have a spot here where you can um look at last month versus this month and if there's been a change in the amount or the percentage of your net worth so like i said we may not we may start using this later on in the year but i know just starting off right now we're not going to be using this and then this is one of my favorite things about this besides the actual you know, weekly budgeting is the where did my money go? So this is when you are closing out your budget for the month. I will be doing videos on these. So sometimes there will be three budgeting videos in a single week when I'm needing to um, close out the budget for the month or set and set up the next month. So these, the first one is your monthly budget category breakdown. And this is where you would get all of the information to put on this yearly spending overview. So you would put your starting balance in your account, any earned income, other income, plus any savings used. That's your total monthly inflow. So again, you would see that same thing here. And then all of your expense categories. So how much did you budget for the month? How much did you actually spend? What was the difference? And then you can see the percentage of your total monthly inflow that you were using on that particular category. And again, she has formulas on how to figure out all of that. And then all of this information can basically just get transferred here. And then this other page is your monthly debt and savings breakdown. So for your debt, again, you would put your total monthly inflow, how much debt you paid off this month, and the percentage of your inflow to debt if you wanted to calculate like that granular. And then you could list out not only just see how much you paid in debt, but where did that money go? So if you have multiple debt categories, you can list out all the different debts you had, the total you paid, and the percentage of that category to the, the debt that you paid. Again, we probably won't use this because it's gonna always be 100% for our car payment because that's the only debt we have right now to pay. But I will be using it for the savings. So your total monthly income, your total that you save for the month and the percentage. So for these saving cat savings categories, these will be all of our sinking funds. So our emergency fund, our boys savings, all of our sinking funds. So I will break it down, put the total that we put into those sinking funds and the percentage of how much we save. So this side I will be using every month, this one probably not, because again, we only have the one. And then this is the last sheet in the where did my money go? And this is your monthly spending comparison. So it's basically taking this exact same information and filling it out and comparing last month to the current month. So this is comparing January to February, so on and so forth. I think this is really good too, because it helps you see um just from one month to the other what the change is and then of course you can have all of this up here so you can see from month to month throughout the entire year so i will definitely be using this as well and then also up here you have a spot to put your monthly inflow change because if you make more money 
nine times out of ten you're going to spend more money um not always but you are and even even if that spent is going into your savings because the money has to go somewhere so it's good to know that if we made five thousand dollars this month versus the next month we got an income tax refund and we ended up with ten thousand dollars coming in it's going to drastically change these numbers because the amount of money that we brought in drastically changed so it's good to see that monthly inflow change compared to this as well so it is it's a lot again everyone that uses this system doesn't use um all of the aspects everyone doesn't necessarily go that deep into their numbers but it's there for you if you want to um and i am an analytical thinker like that so i like going that deep into the numbers so i will definitely be using these um and then this is a new addition to the planner this wasn't here last year i do not believe um, and this is the monthly meal plan and it's just a, a monthly calendar. You can put your monthly food budget and you can do your monthly meal planning. I actually like having this here. You guys know I meal plan every single week. I shop, I order my groceries, um, to control my spending, um, because I'm not picking up random things in the store. I do add random things to my cart. That's not on my list, but that's a different thing. But I don't plan my meals monthly. But I'm still going to use this because when I plan out my meals for the week, um, I told you guys before with my big disbound, like I had issues with how I wanted to keep my meal planning pages because I wanted to be able to refer to them um, later on to see like, hey, when's the last time we had this thing? Or um, I may have planned a meal and we never ate it and I could transfer it to a different day. So I will just use this every week and just write out, you know, what we actually had versus what we planned because that doesn't always um that doesn't always pan out i typically so for our meal plan i typically will just have our meal plan right here in my weekly planner um but if we i actually log what we eat on my daily page when i'm tracking my meals so that's what i think i will probably do is just use this so i'll set this up but i'll just log what we are actually eating so I can go back and reference it. But then again, you have a spot up here to put your monthly food budget. So if you do meal plan for the month, that would be pretty cool too, because you can see laid out um, if you got like holidays or things that are causing you to have um, a bigger meal or a more expensive meal than you typically would. You can see where it's coming up on the calendar and you can work around that and maybe do simpler meals um, for the rest of that week to help offset that food budget. So this is really good. And then you get to the end of the month, so you just have a page of notes, um, which we can always use more notes pages. And then you have the cash envelope teller slips. I was going to just rip this out, but I do like seeing this little pattern on the back. But like I said, I won't be using this because we don't use actual cash envelopes. So that is how the monthly is set up. Every month is set up the same. Um, I do not believe there's anything extra at the end of December. I think it just ends... Yep, it just ends like the regular months and then you get to the pocket. So really quickly, I'm going to flip you guys over to January to show you what my thought is for using this. And then tomorrow's video, you'll see me actually setting it up. So again, same budget calendar. I already told you guys how I'm going to use this. So this is what the monthly, um, not the monthly, the weekly or not weekly, the paycheck budget tracker. I say weekly because we budget weekly. The paycheck budget tracker. So this is what it looks like in its original form. I am using this exactly how it's laid out because that's how I use it now. This is the page that I am not going to be using because we don't use actual cash envelopes. We use them digitally. So I was like, I could figure out something to do with this, but I, was like, I couldn't figure out what to do with this. And so what I did is I was testing out um, various sheets of like sticker paper. So I have like half sheet sticker paper and I was trying to see how it would fit if I wanted to maybe design something and just print it out on sticker paper and put it on top. I didn't like this because I had kind of figured out what I wanted to do. And like I said, I definitely want to use this money thoughts in this priority goals section. And then I tried out a full page sticker sheet, which of course I could always do that, but I don't want to do this every, every week. So what I decided to do, because I told you guys, I really, really like, um, the sinking funds, the sinking funds, uh, tracker here, but this situation is not going to work for me because we have more than eight sinking funds. So what I decided to do is this is how my weekly spread is or my budgeting spread is going to look. So we always, um, sometimes we have rollover money. And so we have our, uh, like a cushion in our checking account. So I always want to be mindful of that. 
and then I just laid out like how this would look. So we would have our rollover, Alan's paycheck. Um, I put his first because he gets paid every week because if it's a week where I don't get paid, mine won't be here, it'll just be his. Um, so my paycheck, and then we have an extra line, which is helpful because if I get a YouTube paycheck, if we just get some random type of income, I have a space to put it here. And then this using it just how it's laid out for bills. And so for our envelopes, what we use every week, so we have gas, groceries, eating out, family fund money, personal spending, and Snowball. Snowball is our rabbit, so I set aside money for her as well. Now our personal spending, all five of us get an allowance, if you will. I don't have space to break that out for five of us. And in case anything else comes up for the week, again, if there's a holiday or um, an appointment or something like that, that we need to budget some extra money for, that would go in the envelopes. And so I wanted to leave space. So what I decided to do here is just put personal spending and put the total. And that's what I'm going to use this to break down this. And same thing for the sinking funds. We have way more sinking funds than will fit here. Plus we have the 52 week savings challenge, our emergency fund. Um, I put rent here. Because what we do is um, our rent is twelve fifty. So on the weeks where I get paid as well as Alan, we just basically take half of our rent out of that paycheck. So we already have, <clears throat> I think we're about a month and a half ahead on our rent or no, half a month, half a month. So we already had money sitting in there um, just from our income tax refund. We just threw some extra money in that sinking fund. Um, but what we do, like I said, when I get paid, um, we just take half of the rent and sit it in there. And so when it's time to pay the rent, we have it all sitting there, but we don't have to cash flow all of the rent from one paycheck. Um, so that's why I have that as a sinking fund, but it's just a little little pocket to set it off to. And it'll make more sense when you see our digital cash envelopes and sinking funds and then our actual sinking funds. And so what we do is our 52 week savings challenge and our emergency fund, we contribute to those every week, the same way we do with our envelopes. These are every week, those two are every week, but the rent and the sinking funds, we only stuff those when I get paid. Um, so, but again, because there's so many and I couldn't fit them all, I was like, okay, I know what I can do with this. So what I do is I break down the personal spending. So Alan, myself, it's CJ Grayson and Ethan. So I can just put the individual amounts because our personal spending, we have our own individual digital envelopes. Um, and so I want to see exactly how much is going in each person's envelope because it is different. It's the same amount every week, but it's different per person. Um, just a heads up, Alan and I get $35 a week for our personal spending. And then the kids, they, their allowance is based on their age. So CJ is 11, his allowance is $11. Grayson's is five and Ethan's is $3. Um, and then sinking funds, like I said, these are all of our sinking funds. So these all would not fit over here. So right here on this line, I would just put the total amount for the sinking fund. So list these all out and put the total amount. That way I can track it in the budget, but then here I can break it down and see exactly what's going to each one because these are all different as well. Um, so I can see the total amount. And then what I decided to do here, like I said, I really love the idea of tracking my sinking funds and tracking what we're adding to it. If we're not this page, <laughs> this one, tracking what we're adding to it, what we're taking away from it and what the ending balance is. But I didn't want to do this on a monthly basis. I wanted to do this on a weekly basis, like some of our sinking funds. Um, and then same thing with our personal spending too. Some of our sinking funds, we're not going to touch every week, like back to school, the boys savings accounts, um, Christmas, our new car and our new house, we won't touch that. We're just gonna be adding to it. But like health and medical, I may pull money out of there for um, like to pay a copay for the doctor's office if I don't wanna use, but I do have my health savings account that I contribute to every pay period and my employer matches it as well. So more than likely it'll be that. But um, all the other ones we may possibly use. And so I wanted to track it on a weekly basis. And so what I did is I basically just recreated this on this little cash denomination breakdown. So I'm just gonna ignore that or I might put some washi or something, but I can put what the beginning balance is for each of these, how much we added, how much we took out, and then an ending balance. So when I close out this budget for the week, I can always see the actual total of our, um, like our personal spending and our sinking funds without having to pull up my banking app, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's a cool way to, for me to reuse this page and have it not go to waste. And then I could still use the money thoughts, um, just what I'm thinking about this week, some things I need to keep in mind with this week, and then that priority goal. So that's how I decided to repurpose this page since we don't use actual cash envelopes. Um, and then here, I was just making some notes of how I wanna track our expenses. Um, like I said, there's six 
of these pages. So I'm going to use five of them for our main checking account. And then we have a separate checking account just for our bills. And I will talk more about that as I'm setting it up and actually using it. So that is what I decided to do. Um, that is a flip through of the budget by paycheck workbook by the budget mom. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, I am more than happy to try to answer them as best as I can. Just remember, I am new to this budgeting journey. I am new to the whole budget mom system. I would love to interact with you guys. That's something that um, as I was looking into budgeting and things like that, I got on YouTube, of course, and was looking. And there's a whole YouTube budgeting community that is really, really awesome. I love the budgeting community on YouTube. They are so helpful. Um and just giving people tips and tricks and seeing things from different perspectives and not being judgmental about people um, and their particular financial situation. Because again, this is a very, very personal thing to share. Um, and anyone who decides to share their budgeting journey on YouTube of all places, they are putting themselves in a very vulnerable position. I have pretty tough skin. I've been on YouTube long enough. So um, you know, most things that people say don't bother me and I don't have any shame whatsoever in our financial situation. I'm very proud of where we are, um, especially from where we've come from. And I'm very proud of the goals that we have going forward. So I don't mind sharing it. But again, I haven't seen, you know, there, I know there's negativity in every pocket of YouTube, but for the most part, the budgeting community from what I've seen has been pretty awesome. And so I'm excited to kind of join that budgeting community and share our journey. Um, I told you guys before, with me merging this channel with my booktube channel, the whole purpose was just to share the journey of what my life is looking like right now. And budgeting is a huge part of it. So I'm really excited to be sharing this with you guys. So like I said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions or ideas, any resources, anything like that, definitely let me know. Um, like I said, the video tomorrow will be me actually setting up those beginning pages. Um... And I won't start doing actual budget with me videos until April, I think. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. So for the rest of this, this month, so this is the video you guys are seeing today. So pen and paper budgeting part one. Tomorrow you will see the pen and paper budgeting part two, which is me setting this up. And then next week, um, Friday and Saturday, you guys are going to see my digital budgeting part one and two. So again, seeing my Google Calendar. Um, with all of my bills laid out. And then I'll give you a walkthrough of PNC's virtual wallet. Um, I, I've seen some people talking about it in the Budget Moms Facebook group and some other people who are interested in going cashless and doing digital cash envelopes. So that's the reason why I want to go over my bank. Like I've been with PNC for four or five years now. Um, and I'm just now like fully realizing all of the budgeting tools and stuff that they have available. So I definitely want to share that with everyone because a lot of people are like, you know, what can I use to to go digital with my cash envelopes and people talk about it and they're like, Hey, tell me more. So I want to share that. And then, like I said, the part two will be showing how we actually manage our digital cash envelopes and our sinking funds and what they look like in the banking app. And then starting, um, starting in April. Um, so yeah, so like this will be a week where I have three budgeting videos in a row because I want to do setting up my April monthly. So setting up the monthly spread, then I'll start doing my budget with me's on Friday and then the digital cash envelope stuffing on Saturdays. So if you guys have any questions about that, if you have any suggestions, if there's anything in particular that you would like to see or you would like explanations on, always just let me know in the comments. I am more than happy to. Like I said, this is me documenting my journey but me also sharing it with you guys to try to be as helpful as i possibly can um so let me know in the comments if you need anything if you have any comments questions suggestions give this video a thumbs up if you are looking forward to seeing uh budgeting content coming from me because i'm very very excited to start putting it out subscribe to the channel if you have not already make sure you hit that bell notification so you are notified when i post new videos and i will see you guys in the next one bye